The opening sequence. The establishing scenes. And then, cut the title card. One of the most overlooked, but also impactful and most powerful moments of any film. And honestly, I'm really surprised with how little credit these title cards actually get. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry guys, please, please don't leave. Excuse my humor. Yet their evolution from going from an unnoticeable, bare, pretty much identification card of a film to a glamorized, carefully placed graphic, there is no doubt that there is certainly a form of art within the title card. So how do filmmakers know when and where to use title cards? What components make them artistic and attractive? And ultimately, how can you create one yourself? And with that, cut to the title card. What's up guys, my name is Devin Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorials, where we go over everything film and video editing related. Today, we're gonna to be discussing how you can create artistic title cards that fit your video project, whether you're working on a short film or making a music video. Having an artistic and beautiful title card will really bring your project to the next level. But before we get started, if you guys are new to this channel, please be sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe if you find this video interesting. It's free, all this content is free, so it really, really means a lot. If you guys have any questions or thoughts you'd like to add throughout the video, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. But without further ado, let's make some title cards. Starting with the purpose. What is basically the point of having a title card in the first place? Well, in the early days of film, title cards basically served pretty much as a point of conversation and a means of dialogue for films because basically there was no sound, so there was no way to communicate actually what the characters were saying. Title cards were then drawn, hand drawn on like actual pieces of paper, and then they were held up to the film photographed and then just basically placed in the middle between the frames of the film and then voila, we have title cards. In today's films, title cards have adopted the new role of basically providing the credit to those who worked on the film as well as providing the actual title or the name of the film, hence, Hence the never mind, you know, never mind. But there's also an extremely overlooked importance of title cards and many really just forget how much tonal impact these title cards have upon the film. Most title cards occur within the first 10 minutes of a film, but regardless of whether the placement's at the beginning or the end, the main primary job of a title is pretty much to just deliver the motion and tone of the film. Whether that be communicated through bright colors to portray a happy film or through grainy and tainted textures to portray a gritty and more dark and dramatic film. It's vital that when that text flashes across the screen, your audiences have a clear idea of what they should expect from this film regarding the tone and just overall feel of the movie. Honestly, it's kind of hard to explain, but here, let's take a look at a couple examples. For one, Martin Scorsese's After Hours is a great example of title card communication. This film was filmed very fast paced and has a very stressed and just fast paced feel to the movie. In turn, the opening titles were very bright and vibrant and they flashed very, very quickly. So the audiences kind of had to keep up with the titles, reading them very fast, therefore getting their heartbeat up to that speed, adjusting them to the overall feel of the movie so that when that movie started, they knew exactly what they were in for. With title cards, you really want to get your audience in tone with your film before it even starts. Other films such as Tenet implement a superimposed title, being one of the few films that Christopher Nolan actually uses a title at the very beginning of his films compared to Dark Knight, Dunkirk, and just all the other rest of his films. This simple Tenet title card placed over a visual of the protagonist character dying due to suicide really helps set the dark and dramatic, mysterious vibe of the film, once again, all before the film has really started. Ultimately, the job of a title card is basically to set the tone of the movie. Whether it's placed at the beginning, then that job is to basically set the tone, or if it's placed at the end, it's to reestablish that tone. How with all the theory and nonsense out the way, <laughs> film school, what basically are the components that make a title card artistic and creative? Well, let's go ahead and dive into some title card examples to see how they perfectly execute these components. All right guys, so now that we are finally inside of Premiere, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a couple titles that really do a great job of executing a very visually enticing and impactful title. But before we dive in, we're gonna go over real quick the three components that really help define influential and impactful titles. The first component being three sector heading. Now for those of you who aren't familiar, three sector heading is basically a title format where the text is divided into three different variations of sizes. Now let's take example a title. Let's, let's take this title for example. We're gonna go ahead and just drag this right in over our project and let's go ahead and just scale this up. Now this title right here is a great example of three sector heading. The first title right here, this big bold red sample title demonstrates the first sector which is going to be 
the heading title. And this is really the bold text. This is where we want the title, the main title, what we want the audience to see the first impression. When you're designing titles, the number one thing that you want to keep in mind is what is my audience going to see first? And for title cards, that is really determined by the first sector of heading, which is going to be the heading text, which is the boldest text. So let's go ahead and make something unique like a cool title. Boom. And we can we can we can just change that. Boom, there you go. A cool title. Where do your eyes go immediately when you see this visual? A cool title. Immediately. That's immediately what I see right when right away when I see this title. Why? Because that's the first size. Now the second and third sectors heading are going to be text below it. So for example, right here we have a second, or we can call it third sector. It honestly depends, but I would say this would be a second sector heading, and this is basically the subtext. Now, this is where a lot of your credits are gonna go. So we can go ahead and change any names that we want. Let's so change this right here, performed by me, Devin Wynn. Let's go ahead and change that text and boom, there you go. Now let's just go ahead and scale this text up and voila. Now we have some second sector subtext title. Now this second text basically can be used to convey information. Like for example, right here, we're trying to convey the credits and basically who are the people who worked on this project. But in turn, this second sector text also kind of elevates the title as well, just giving it a second dimension and depth. And it's just not all about this giant title. It can also help escalate really lavish and wild titles. For example, let's say, if we have a really, really crazy title, I'm trying to look for a crazy text. Oh, like this one, for example. This is a great example, I love this. Now for this title right here, we have a really crazy font for this, for the main heading title, and it's kind of pretty crazy. And if we have it alone, it is honestly not gonna look good. But when we add all this extra little text below it, this other credit text, which is in Arial font, it really helps de-escalate the craziness of the text and it also makes it more acceptable. Now, always remember when it comes to the elements of design and also marketing, when you're trying to sell something surprising, make it familiar. And if you're trying to sell something familiar, make it surprising. The same goes with design. We have some familiar Arial, just standard boxes, simple font. And then we have this really, really crazy, I think this font is called Monfilm. Uh, that really just elevates it and combined together, they really create a nice combo. But if we have both of them separate, they just don't work alone. Now, real quick, if you're wondering where I'm getting all of these cool titles from and how am I just like adjusting and changing all the text and sizes on the go, this is basically part of our new 11% title preset pack. This preset pack is super fun. It comes with 15 fully customizable titles right here. As you can see, I'm using, I can literally go ahead and just drag any title that I want from the browse menu right here. And then I could just go ahead and scale it up and just change the text. It's super, super easy, especially if you're somebody who is looking to create unique, cool titles that exercise all these elements and components that we're discussing right now, but you just simply don't have the time to sit and work relentlessly at just trying to create this perfect title when we already have a nice 15 preset pack. This preset pack is really super fun and simple to easy to use, and it's only $9.99 on 11percent.net. And also just because you guys are here checking out this video and I can already tell you care about design, you can go ahead and use this promo code right here for an exclusive 11% off discount. It's a really, really super helpful and fun title preset pack. I love to use this for all my music videos. Whenever I got a project, I'm on the fly. I got to edit super fast, just grab a title, slap it on there, and it looks amazing because we really spent a lot of time designing these and making sure that these are perfect. Make sure to go check these out right here at 11percent.net. Really appreciate it, guys. But anyways, moving on to our second component of an artistic design. Now, this is going to be the color palette. Now, the color palette, of course, cannot be more essential. It can really help set the tone as fun or simple or loud or calm and quiet. And it's really, really fun to mess around with, especially if you're good at color theory and just knowing what palettes work together. Now, if you're like me and you don't know any of that, I, I had to Google that, learn color theory, but you can just come over here to this website. It's called colorhunt.co. I love to use it. It's really cool. It has a bunch of crazy color palettes that you can use. And especially if you're searching for palettes, let's say this title that we're working on, I would like for it to be like a more yellowish orange color. Let's go ahead and just search for yellow and orange. I'm gonna add an orange tag and voila, we already have a bunch of crazy color palettes that come up with yellow and orange tabs. So it's really cool. I could just pull from any of these colors and it basically gives you all the codes. So yeah, let's say I just really like this yellow color right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this code, copy it, and then let's go ahead and apply a tint effect to this entire title. And I'm just gonna change matte black all the way to this yellow color that we got and voila look at that that beautiful yellow color it honestly was a little bit different than 
on Google Chrome. But anyways, as you can tell, you can really just mess around with it, have fun, and just create unique titles. Lastly, moving on to the third element of design. This element has to be the element of contrasting design. Now, this aspect of design is probably one of the most important because it really is what brings all the whole whole design and whole look together. Now, for example, what is contrasting design? Now, you might be familiar with contrasting colors. We have opposite colors, reds and yellows and blues, all our primary colors. If you put those together, it's really harsh. But when we have contrasting elements of design, we're gonna be looking more at the shape, the size and the look and the sleekness of design. So for example, this title right here, I love this title because it perfectly executes the element of contrasting design. Right here, this text right here in the middle, the example text is very square and just boxy, which contrasts with this nice, smooth and round circular oval around the edges, along with these nice smooth stars on the edges as well. And it really just creates this sense of contrast of sharp, harsh edges, and then really nice smooth and wavy textures and shapes. And I think that's what really helps bring this design a lot more to life compared to if this text, for example, was something like smooth and wavy. Let's see if we can find one. So yeah, if we did something like this, it just, it just kind of does not work the same because font is kind of round, but then also boxy, but then this is round. So if you really stick with contrasting elements, you can really help guide you to get a better looking design. This one, I love this this design right here. It uses the, I forget what the font is called, Mon, Montflair. But basically right here, it has this really, really, really thin Montflair font. And then there's stars, these really, really fat stars. And these stars create a nice contrast as everything else is very thin and simple. And then the stars are just really fat and just creates a nice contrast. Now this title, I'd probably change the actual footage. I wouldn't apply this to this actual footage. As you can see, there's so many just different ways that you can apply this. But this once again, we have some nice round and curvy text and then some boxy designs going on over here. If you can create that contrast and design, you can really help guide yourself into creating more pleasing and visually pleasant designs. And with that, those are the three elements of artistic design. Now with all that out the way, let's go ahead and make some title cards of your own. All right guys, so now that we are back into Photoshop, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to start off with our three sector heading. I'm gonna create a new title for Destroy Lonely's If Looks Could Kill album. I think that was a cool project recently, but um, I feel like the title design on that was a bit lazy. I don't know, just saying, just saying, if I were to design it, this is what I would do. So let's go ahead and just drag some text over here. I'm just gonna get a new text right here and I'm just gonna call it Look kill uh, the new short film. By the way, if you haven't checked out that short film, I really am loving the direction of artists making like short films for their for their work. I don't know, I think that's really cool. But I'm gonna start off, let's start off with some archival black fonts and I'm just gonna space everything out. And one thing I really kind of had in mind right now is I'm gonna go for something really skinny. So I'm just going to hold shift and scale this down so we got some really, really skinny looking font. This will be our first sector heading right here. My audience comes in and sees this video, I want them to look at this text the first thing. As we mentioned, let's. I'm gonna jump real quick from color palette. We're gonna do color palette last, but I'm gonna jump to the contrasting design element. So this, because this text is very kind of like square and harsh corners, we're gonna try to make some shapes with a lot more smoother, wavy feels to it. Uh, and because this is like kind of a, a, a horror film album, I'm gonna kind of want them to be like red slashes. I don't know, I think that'd be pretty cool. It's like some blood splattering or something like that. I'm gonna grab my pen tool right here. Let me get like a base little red color and let's go ahead and try to draw out some red shaped things. This is kind of looking like a, a little cool inverted weird Nike swoosh thing. So now let's go ahead and just kind of like move these around. I might put this one like right here. Let's duplicate it by holding option or alt if you're on PC and then command T to rotate it. And let's, let's just change direction. One's going that way, the other's going this way. And it's kind of looking pretty decent right now. We kind of have, it kind of looks like, yeah, you're getting chopped up. They look like a little bit of like some cool wounds going on right here. Now, one thing, this is why I like to design things on Photoshop first, is I would like these wishes to go in and out of the letters. And the way I can basically do this is by simply coming over here to the main text right here. I'm gonna hit command D to duplicate it. Uh, now we have a copy of this and I'm gonna drag this copy of the text to the very top. Now the text you can see is on top of our swooshes. And now let's go ahead and just rasterize this by right clicking this. And then we're gonna click on our eraser tool. Oh, I guess we have to rasterize it anyways. And 
Now let's just go ahead and simply get rid of some of this top layer text right here. We could just simply erase and you can see now it looks like the swoosh is going in and out of our text. It kind of looks pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and go back to our sector heading rule and we can go ahead and add some smaller subtext. So instead of going for a really bold font, let's go for something really simple like Poppins right here. I'm going to space this one out just a tad bit. I might go for the bold version actually, cause I'm gonna make this text really, really small. Looks could kill dot, dot, dot. There, boom, there we go. We have some nice, if looks could kill text. And then let's go ahead. I don't know, this is a fun tip trick. You can apply it, you can not. Numbers, random numbers. Well, dude, that's like really the icing on the cake. I'm serious. So I, I don't know. I just like to put random numbers and like dashes and stuff like that. And really that is really what helps tie my designs together at the end. So right here if we just put some random text like that yeah that honestly looks quite decent for a title and boom there we go there we have a pretty nice decent main title and then i'm just going to go ahead and type out the text that i was talking about so i'll just do this lonely text and i'll make this like uh let's do a very tall text like anton and we could stack this up stretch it just a tad bit because i love stretch text and voila that could be our artist title card and then we can use that and cut to the main title card and as a gesture i'm going to be giving you guys this title card that we designed right here right now completely for free you guys can have this one it's on the house. This is gonna be a Mogurt preset title pack that you can use and apply in Premiere Pro. And as a courtesy, and thank you guys for watching this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys this title right here completely for free, zero dollars. Make sure to check it out right here in the link down below. If you guys made it to the end of the video, thank you again really so, so, so much for watching. Once again, if you guys would like to make your own unique and beautiful title card designs, but don't have the time to sit down and design one from scratch, definitely make sure to check out the 11% title preset pack for Premiere Pro. It's only $10 and it comes with 15 high quality customizable titles for Premiere Pro. It's super easy and simple to use. It's pretty much just drag and drop. And with a selection of 15 Mogurt files, you have a high variety of different looks to choose from for your projects. I really put a lot of time and effort into designing this preset pack and making it really perfect for you guys and making sure that you guys have the easiest and most fun experience while designing and making your own title cards. So please definitely make sure to check this out right here at 11%.net, link is in the description. And if you use this discount code right here, you can get an exclusive 11% discount on your title pack definitely make sure to check it out below if you guys haven't already please be sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe really it means so so much to me in this channel make sure to follow us on instagram here at 11 percent prod for future updates on tutorials like this once again thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video peace